Well, we're already over a month into this study in Romans. This is week five. Oh, it thrills me to be able to go through this book and what we're gathering. Why, well, if you hadn't, if you hadn't uh, been listening to this study in Romans, go back, go go back to March the thirty. I I want to I want to encourage you to go back to June the twenty first of two thousand and twenty one and do the in him scripture study and then come right on in to this study in Romans. I'm telling you, it I, it has done something in me that I can't explain. This thing has been downloaded thousands of times, and I, I just I, it just thrills me to be able to give you the the resources free of charge to 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 listen to this and and find out in your own heart what God is saying to you in His Word. Who you are in Jesus Christ will put you in a place of strength, not in your own goodness, not in your own righteousness, but in what God has said in his word about you. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about, because if you can find out who you are in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you can come to a place that you're stronger than you've ever been in your life. And you can come to a place, I've said this over and over at the jail, that you can come to a place that you cannot be defeated and anything that you set your heart to, you can accomplish and you can overcome anything. You can overcome anything if you'll find out who Jesus Christ has made you to be, who God has made you to be in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Stand on those truths. Stand on what God is saying. Don't don't let the devil deceive you ever again. You know, the the only way that the devil can beat you is for you to believe his lies. I don't want you to ever believe another lie ever again. If you'll get rooted and grounded in this word, I promise you, there's nothing in this world world that comes against you can defeat you. Now, listen. Go to go back to June the twenty first of two thousand and twenty one, and get in this in him scripture study, and then come right on through this this study in Romans. I, if if you if you're hesitant at it, go back to last Thursday and last Friday and listen to those two podcasts at what Jesus Christ done for you, what you can expect through the promises that God has made us in his word. Do that. Listen, go back and find out who God has made you to be. Glory to God. You know, I do these prayers. These prayers are special to me because I do them not only for, for myself, but for the world that I live in, for every person that walks face this planet that they would come to know and understand, have their eyes opened to God's love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. You say, well, you do them for yourself? Absolutely, because I want the revelation that God has for me over how good he is, or how much he's for me, and I want you to understand that and get hold of that today. Ephesians 1.15, rather, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body, 
It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God he opens my eyes to those truths every day of my life through his word, through what he says to me in his word. And I pray that you'd have your eyes opened to God's love and his mercy, his grace and his goodness, just how much he's for you, just how much he wants to be part of your life and and guide and direct you and strengthen you in every aspect. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me, use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're going to be in Romans, the uh, fourth chapter and the 13th verse. It says, for the promise that he should be heir. Who is he? It's it's Abraham. It says, "For, for, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, through the law, but but through the righteousness of faith. Now, let me go to the New Living Translation. It says, clearly, God's promises to give the whole earth, earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right, right, a right relationship with God that comes by faith. That's the new living. Listen to Amplified. It said, for, for the promise of Abraham or his prosperity that we that he should inherit the world did not come through observing the commands of the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Faith in God has brought us that promise. It brought Abraham that promise. And and if you look at the timeline and and where Abraham was in in the the uh, in Genesis, you'll find out that the law wasn't even present when when Paul was talking to the Romans about this. But the Romans was dealing with the law, and he wanted them to know that look, the promise that God made to Abraham had nothing to do with his goodness, his his law abiding ways, what he was doing uh, to have a good relationship with God. It was by faith, by, by the righteousness of faith. And that is, a, that is a statement that I want to make to you today. It's because you are righteous because of faith in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And when you come to understand that and realize that, a, a a relationship with God is is strengthened. I was talking to my wife over the weekend, and I told her, I said, "Listen, I said, I said, I've come to the conclusion that if we can figure out and and come to know who we are in Jesus Christ and stand firmly in that faith in what who He has made us to be, not in what not in our good deeds." But in him, 
things won't get to us near as bad. It won't. They, they can't because if you're standing in faith in God, faith in his word, faith in what Jesus Christ has made you to be in this world, there's nothing in this world that come, can come against you. And, and Paul knew that, but he was trying to convince the, the, uh, the Romans the law has nothing to do with what you're dealing with. He, he, was, he was explaining to them that, that uh, Adam or Abraham was not given the promise that he was given because he, he uh, abided in the law live by the law. The law wasn't even present at this time. But yet he was given those promises through the righteousness of faith that he had in God. Stand on these promises. Understand this. It it thrills me when I think of, of the position that we hold as children of God because of our faith in what Jesus Christ done. This, this, what, what, I'm, what I'm looking at in life today, when I think of the position that God has given me, not because of my goodness, not because of that I'm, I'm living by the law or, or, or just you know being a good moral and ethical person, and that, that's important, but it's not because of that. It's because I'm believing him. I'm believing what Jesus Christ done for me. And I I can look at his word and say that is the truth above all opinion. And look at his word and know it in my heart that I'm standing strong by who? By who I am in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm in him and he's in me. And, and what Abraham received as that promise is mine, not because I'm a good person or have been a good person or have lived by the law to the letter. No, it's because of, of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's because of what he done and my faith in him. I promise you, there's no other place in this world that I'd rather be. I, I was thinking about it yesterday at church. You know, uh, I was sitting there and the thought come through my mind, you know, I'd rather, I had rather, or no, if, if I was in a war zone, thinking, knowing that I was in God's will, I wouldn't want to go be anywhere else. I under, understand what I'm saying. When, when you are standing in faith, Believe in God, and he decides to, to put you in a place that, that's, to the world, a very dangerous place. That's the most safe place that you'll ever be. I, I don't understand what, what has went on for the last couple of mu- months, how that, you know, how that could have been a, 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 a good good position for me but I know God does God didn't make me sick put me in the hospital Satan done that he tried he tried his best to kill me but God seen me through and I promise you he's going to bring me through it and listen to this for my good and his glory why because I've got faith in him I'm healed In Jesus' name, by the stripes of my Lord and Savior, I am healed now in Jesus' name. I'm not waiting on it to happen. It it has happened already. 2,000 years ago, Jesus took stripes on Calvary's cross for my healing, and I received it months ago now, and I'm going to stand in it. I'm going to believe it. I know without a shadow of a doubt God's got my back. And whatever comes from now till till God takes me home, I'm going to stand on what he says being true. Stand in that. Believe that. 
Abraham wouldn't, wouldn't uh, promise the promise that he was promised because he was a good person. He wasn't. He, he, he didn't abide by the law, and he didn't do this, and he didn't do that. And you can go back and look at, at Ab- Abraham through his life. You know, he, he, he done a lot, a lot of bad stuff. I mean, he just plain old lied, plain old lied. Tried to get in God's way, and and with with uh, Sarah's handmaid, Sarah gave him his hand, her handmaid, to have a child with it, and it, I mean, just just crazy stuff that he should have never done. But it wasn't because so it wasn't because he was abiding by the law. Well, it wasn't the law, period. But it wasn't because he was a good person. It was because that he believed God through the righteousness of faith, faith, Abraham was promised the world. You understand that? And his seed. And we're his seed. You know, if that, I'm going to go back and read that one more time because uh, the 13th, ver, 13th verse of, of Romans 4, it says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And you say, well, what's his seed got to do with it? <laughs> He's got a lot to do with it because we are his seed. We are heirs to that promise. Through what? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Galatians 3.29 spells it out. Let, just let me roll, uh, go back there and, and show you or read to you what God's word has promised us through this. It says, and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All those promises that were made to Abraham in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, was given to us when we became children of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, that thrills me. It thrills me. And I'm going to stand on on those promises from now on because I promise you what God has said is true. He's not a liar. He's going to back it up. He's going to back it up 100% regardless of what comes against me, what comes against you. If you're a child of God, believe what God's Word says and stand on it. Glory to God. It's not by the law that we that Abraham was promised that promise, but through the righteousness of faith, through the righteousness that God has made him to be in faith in him. And he's made us to be that righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Oh, that thrills me. That thrills me to be able to, to proclaim to you today that Jesus Christ has made you, has made you a child of God. And you can stand on on that from now on and believe without a shadow of a doubt that God has got your back. He is for you, not against you. Those promises are yours through faith in Him. Glory to God. Now, I've got a question for for you today. Are you born again? Have you given your heart and life to Jesus Christ? Have you made him Lord of your life? Because that's what it takes to receive these promises. It don't take you being a a law-abiding citizen. I'm I'm not talking about uh, laws of the land. I'm talking about God's law. I'm I'm talking about you giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ and letting him wash you clean, wash you clean. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's what it takes to be saved, to believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead to justify you and then to proclaim him Lord of your life. Accept him as Lord today. 
Receive him as Lord. Invite him in. Let him come into your heart and into your life and save you. He will. I promise you he will through faith in what he done. Not faith in your goodness, but faith in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and what he done to make that sacrifice for you. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear what God, what you need God to do. I want to hear it. I, you know why I want to hear it? Because I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can agree on that your prayer request is answered. That's what I want to do. I want to send you the truth in God's word, what he says about that prayer request, and then agree with you that that prayer request has been answered. Glory to God. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Oh, I thank God for the truth that he has allowed us to give away through your help and sowing into this ministry to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over this planet. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.